according to some fund data provided by Vetify, the healthcare ETF, XLV, has seen the most inflows this year to date of any of the sector ETFs. Joining us now to talk some names is Greenwood Capital President and CIO Walter Todd, one of his main Funds, the large cap equity strategy is overweight healthcare, and B of A security senior biotech and pharma analyst Jeff Meacham is here as well. Gentlemen, good evening to both of you. Walter, my, my question is the case for healthcare right now, since it is what a quarter of your portfolio, more than the S P exposure, especially relative to some other safe haven plays like utilities or consumer staples. Why is healthcare more attractive to you? Yeah, good evening, Sarah. Glad to be here. So we think the combination that healthcare has between valuation and growth is is unique right now. If you look at utilities and staples, they trade at over 20 times earnings, about a 20% premium to the market. Healthcare and aggregates trading at about 15 times or 10% discount to the market. You combine that with the growth opportunities across biotech, pharma, healthcare equipment, et cetera. And we think that combination is, is a great one uh, in this type of market. I'm looking at some of the stocks that you own, and of course, Jeff covers a lot of them. Jeff, and you have a buy on a lot of his on a lot of his companies that he likes: Vertex Pharmaceuticals, Lilly. Why? Why Vertex? Why is that stock so hot? It's up more than 30 percent this year, and and should you continue to be in it? Uh, Jeff, well, th thanks. Uh, first of all, Sarah, yeah, for uh, for having me. Yeah, Vertex is a stock that we like. Well, as you mentioned, we do have a buy on it. Um, I think in this era, you know, the period that we're in, in terms of mostly defensive names working and in a lot of macro uncertainty, um, drugs or companies in the rare disease space really do quite well because they're they're very insulated from you know from a lot of these macro pressures. And Vertex is probably one of the biggest ones out there. I wanted to also ask Jeff about J and J, which is in your portfolio, and um, excuse me, Walter, which is in your portfolio. Jeff covers it and has a hold rating on that one. Why, why do you like J&J? &J? How did the split? There's been some legal drama. It's flat year to date. Yeah, well, uh, flat is the new up uh, in this market. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we like, again, you know, it's a combination of trades at 16 times earnings. It's, you know, it's not growing tremendously fast, but mid-single digit type growth. You got the 2.75% dividend yield. So, you know, J&J is kind of that all-weather stock, kind of a cornerstone of a portfolio and the volatility that we're seeing in the market. We think it's a great you know, position to have uh, in any portfolio. Jeff, why do you disagree? Yeah, well, I, we, we're not negative on J&J. &J. I would say it's a stock that you want to own in periods of extreme macro uncertainty. We're in that period, but it does seem like maybe we're, we're, we're getting out of it soon. But there are some uncertainties on J and J. You know, what is the core business worth uh, when you uh, when after you separate out consumer uh, and some of their segments? You know, uh, pharma and and, and uh, medical devices. You know, the growth is a little bit uncertain at this point. But you know, I would say I, I agree that it's a great defensive play. But there are other stocks that you can play defense with, perhaps lower multiples uh, or better growth. Like what? Like what? What do you like better? Uh, yeah, I would say Pfizer uh, is one of the ones that we do like. Um, you know, just with respect to uh, uh, the COVID upside, um, you have a lower multiple. You do have a, a, a lot of accretive M&A going on right now um, uh, at Pfizer. And, you know, it's uh, um, I put Bristol in the same camp. You know, they're, they're more defensive, uh, slightly, you know, uh, slightly better growth, um, but uh, a, better, a, a better long term picture, I would say.